Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And I'm here once again to overanalyze the Blackwell legacy. Let's just go ahead and pick up where we left off. Basically, we've already spread the ashes of our aunt, who was our only living relative in this world. And now we're going to investigate the mysterious suicide of a young college girl at NYU. Even though we primarily write book reviews for a living, but hey, a paycheck's a paycheck and all the other journalists are busy, I guess. Ugh. I feel like hell and I have to interview college kids. Hopefully this won't take too long. Well, she's not wrong. If you know what you're doing, this whole section of the game doesn't take very long. Hmm? Ooh, looky here, ladies and gentlemen, and every bond between a multiple choice dialogue option. Well, good thing here, it really doesn't matter what we say, because the outcome's inevitable. But we're going to interview this boy about the mysterious girl's suicide. This is about Joanne, isn't it? You know her? Well, I am the RA for this floor. All right. Now this floor is an all-woman's floor, and this gentleman, and I mean he's actually a man, is the RA for it. That's kind of weird, and kind of surprising that that would happen. But hey, at least this guy's rather accommodating and willing to plot dump all the information about the girl who committed suicide on us. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't know everybody. The campus police found her around 5 a.m. this morning. Can you tell me about her? Hmm. Well, all right. But could you leave my name out of it? So what we have right here is another choice that has little to no ramifications outside of flavor text. That shouldn't be a problem. Good. Joanne's parents have already asked for the to fire me. I don't need anyone else knowing who I am. I still think the whole thing about you being a dude on an old woman's floor would be cause to be fired. I'm just saying. Some people are a little bit uncomfortable with that idea. Hell, imagine what the parents would think. What do you want to know? Ooh, hello once again, Blackwell Legacy's unique feature. I do really appreciate the fact that you don't pick up a lot of items in this game. You're not a kleptomaniac, like in most adventure games. But rather, you actually behave a bit like a real live investigator, and you collect clues. Although you still have to rub them up against each other and hope that they create new fresh clues. But hey, for the most part, it's a good bit of game design. So how did you get to be an RA of this floor? What do you mean? Well, it's a girl's floor, and you, well... Aren't. Yes. Well, it's like this. Someone at the registrar thought Adrian was a girl's name. So here I am. None of the girls have complained? Not yet. They seem to prefer it. This sort of thing happens quite frequently. You'd be surprised. You know, maybe if everyone agreed to it, yeah, he could have gotten by with it for the semester. But you would think once the campus police and authorities got to investigating this girl's suicide, they would be like, oh my god, there's a male RA on an all-female floor. Uh, we should probably do something about this. Frankly, this whole situation with Adrian seems like something that would be out of a National Lampoon movie. Or it would be the plot of one of those unrated directed DVD spin-offs of the American Pie series. Yeah? Well, hello there, Miss Alternative Lifestyle. You look like you're in your 30s. But whatever, we're gonna pretty much do the same song and dance with her that we did with Adrian. Hi, I'm Rosangela Blackwell, with the Village Eye. <laughs> the Village what? The Village Eye, the newspaper. I've never heard of it. Again, it doesn't matter what you select here, and I feel like maybe this was supposed to go somewhere, but eh. It really didn't. Who knows? Maybe it's just there so you can roleplay as a whatever you want to roleplay as. It's just a small paper. Yeah, I guess that. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about your roommate, if that's alright. Jesus Christ. I'm busy with midterms. I told the campus police everything. Do you have to bother me? Look, so she killed herself. Big whoop. Wow, isn't she just a wonderfully likable character? But anyway, you're gonna have to end up exhausting all your dialogue options with Miss Gothic Raver, I don't know what she is, girl. And then go through all the clues you've collected with her. Cause you see, this is gonna open up new clues that you in turn can go ask Adrian about. Which is gonna open up new clues that you in turn can ask this girl about. So yeah, you have to do a little bit of back and forth here. But the first go around through this game, it may seem a little bit counterintuitive. Because, well, the clue you have to collect may not seem all that obvious. What can you tell me about Joanne's roommate? Kelly? Have you met her? Yes. Quite a sight, huh? But don't judge her by that. She's the sharpest kid you'll ever meet. She gets straight A's on everything. Really? Yep, she's pre-med. Well, isn't that just wonderful to find out? But that still doesn't change the fact that she's kind of heartless. 
But let's not draw this out any further. Here is the clue you have to ask Adrian about, so you can then ask Kelly about it, which will then open up a whole new dialogue tree, because you see, all that dialogue you went through before with Kelly was all for nothing, because this is the clue that's the key to opening the whole game's damn plot. That's probably a lot more build-up than this clue deserves, honestly. Do you know if Joanne had any trouble sleeping? I'm afraid I wouldn't. Her roommate, Kelly, never complained, but that's not surprising. Why is that? Well, Kelly rarely spent the night in her room. She only comes here to study, as far as I've seen. Well, there's a breakthrough we needed, folks. Kelly sleeps somewhere else, so she had no idea what was going on in Joanne's life because she was never there, okay? I'm sure this would have more impact if I showed you the ten odd minutes I was talking to Kelly, but frankly, yeah, you didn't want to see that because we're going to talk to her now about this. But first, we got to rub some clues together to open up a whole new clue that we can ask Kelly about that is going to be the next breakthrough in this investigation. We busting this damn case wide open. Something isn't right. If Kelly's been spending her night somewhere else, how can she know if her roommate was sleeping well or not? Hmm, I think Kelly was lying to me. No, not you, Kelly. Why would you lie to us? It's not like we're a complete stranger that randomly knocked on your door one day. Your RA told me that you haven't been sleeping in your dorm. Yes, so? You told me that Joanne slept in her room every night. So? How would you know Joanne slept here if you've been sleeping somewhere else? Huh? Oh, well, I just assumed. Did you lie to me? I didn't lie. I just... No, screw it. You wanna talk? Fine. Finally. We're going to know the real truth behind Joanne's suicide. Although, again, there's no reason for this lady to volunteer any of this information. We just a journalist for a no-name newspaper, but hey, whatever. So what was Joanne really like? To be honest, there's nothing to say. She was studying political science, which is kind of cool, I guess. But she was so vanilla. Vanilla? You know, sweet, but not much there. Just a typical college kid. Acted just like everybody else. She seemed proud of it. Whoa, she was a regular, normal girl. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Well, no. Although, the last few weeks, she's been talking in her sleep. What did she say? No idea. Couldn't understand her. She swore up and down that she wasn't doing it. She looked a bit scared, though. Scared? How so? Just scared. I didn't need the drama, so I'd been sleeping at my boyfriend's place. So you weren't here when she... Killed herself? No, I wasn't here. N not that it would have made much of a difference. Are we done? Hmm, way to sound guilty over something, Kelly. But don't read too much into it, folks. I could really use a photo of Joanne, if you have one. Hmm, alright. Just a sec. Yeah, we couldn't have just pulled it off of her Facebook page. We need a good old-fashioned, honest-to-God photograph. Because this is 2006. We didn't have computers then. This was hers. It was on her desk. She won't be needing it anymore. Joanne's the girl on the left. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Ugh. This is getting worse. At least I have enough for the story now. I'd better get home. Well, that's fantastic. We achieved everything. Basically, all the information we gathered probably could have been found in a police report. And the photo we got, well... We needed it for the paper, so there was another way of getting a photograph of Joanne, you know. But hey, we done. We got the article ready to go, and we're gonna get paid, folks. Oh my god. This really hurts. Sleep, that's all I need. I'll just type up the story and get to bed. Shouldn't take that long. And yes, indeed, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write right now. Right. No more interruptions. Done. Article's finished, picture is scanned, and I am done for the day. No. What's... I need fresh air. I've got to get out of here. Oh no, we can't sleep yet, because we gotta talk to our neighbor. Why, you ask? Um, well, I'm not entirely sure. I guess that's what you do whenever you have crippling headaches. You go talk to your neighbor about stuff. Hello, Rosa. Come in, come in. Don't mind the pooch, he's harmless. So you talk to the neighbor for a while. And she's a very nice, very lovely lady. But unfortunately, she doesn't really tell you anything important at all to the game's plot. 
But she does give you a key item, and that's a dog treat that we're going to save for use later. But anyway, after we're done talking to the nice neighbor lady, we can finally go back to our apartment and finally try to get some sleep. What is happening? Oh no, she's having a plot advancement attack. It's gone. The pain, it's gone. That was strange. It was like... like... What is that? Uh, yeah, you may want to call someone about the radioactive photo. The photo. Something is different about it. I almost don't want to look, but... Oh my god, the guy on the left of the screen is in the photo! No, no, no! I did not just see that. I am not going crazy. No, it's just the stress, that's all. Auntie's death, work, life. Yeah, I'm kind of having a hard time buying that you're all that stressed out. I mean, I get it, death's hard to deal with, but it's been firmly established that you didn't necessarily even know your auntie, and that your work life is writing book reviews, so I really don't know what to say. I don't want to sound judgmental or anything. I just need a rest, that's all. Oh no, the same thing's happening that happened at the very beginning of the game. Oh no, she's been shot by a sniper. Or just a ghost is exploding out of her head. Hello, bright eyes. Well, that kind of creepy sexist statement just knocked our pro protagonist out. Why do they always do that? So now we got a ghost, and finally we're moving on to the good bits of the game. We done building up all the plot and everything. We're now gonna move on to actual ghosting buddy pal adventuring. So, Griff, long time no see. How's tricks? Right, thought as much. He's talking to the teddy bear right there. That's kind of like a thing in Blackwell. The teddy bear, not talking to them. Blackwell dames. Always sleeping. You're always sleeping, and I'm always watching. Yep, that's me. The eternal chump. Mmm. It's about time. Hey, nap time Nelly. Wake up! Well, ghost dude, no need to be a jerk. You just exploded out of this poor lady's head. She may need a little bit of time to recuperate, you know? What? Ahem. <clears throat> Shall we try this again? No. Now that's not very polite. Hey, ghost dude. Glass houses and all that. Go away. I'm afraid I can't do that, darling. Believe me, I've tried. No, you don't exist. Oh, yes, I do. Look at me. This is not happening. This is not happening. Oh, brother. I am not going insane. There is nothing there. Could you? No. I am not my aunt. I am not my grandmother. I am not going to end up like that. Listen. Get out of my head. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Could you? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Wow, these are all pretty legitimate concerns. Hopefully, our new ghost buddy can handle this situation with some tact. No, you shut up. You're gonna listen. And you're gonna listen good. I've been watching you all day, sweetheart. You know who I am. No. Yes. I'm not going away, so there'd be no point in beating around the bush. Now say my name. Sir, we just met. How rude of you. Damn you, you know my name. Now say it. You're... Yes? You're Joey? Good girl. You got it in one. Yeah, I've always found the introduction of Joey in the Blackwell series to be a little bit weird. But then again, writing about making a new ghost buddy that pops out of your head is bound to lead to some strangeness. Now turn around and look at me. I... Don't worry. I won't bite. Couldn't even if I wanted to. Hi there. Um... Yes, indeed, you can make your own choice right here and shake up some of the dialogue. But I always go the accepting route, because why drag it out? We got a ghost buddy now, let's just roll with it. You really exist. Oh, yes. Live and in person. Although I'm not really alive, and I'm not sure if I can still call myself a person anymore. So who are you? I'm Joey Malone. 
and I'm the family spirit guide. Oh, Joey, who could be mad at a guy with a smile like that? What? Think of me as the Blackwell legacy, darling. Oh, damn! He just name-dropped the title of the game. I'm passed down from one generation to the next, like a family heirloom. First your grandmother got stuck with me, then your aunt, and now you. Oh, just like any other terrible hereditary disease. Although that's probably not a nice thing to call Joey. Where did you come from? That's a long, long story, dollface. And we've got more important things to do. Like updating his vocabulary. Come on, dude, it's not the 1950s anymore. You can't go around calling ladies doll faces. Why have you been haunting my family? Haunting? Is that what I'm doing? That's a real ugly word. Answer me, why are you here? You got me, sweetheart. I've been wondering why me and why your family since this whole gig started. Must be some kind of gift your family has. A gift? You're a medium. A medium with a direct connection with the spirit world. And I, my dear, have the unique pleasure of being that connection. I don't... I don't understand any of this. Your family's a bunch of medians, you got ghost buddies. It seems pretty straightforward to me. Oh, you will, babe, you will. You know what, Joey, you may want to be a little bit more careful with the word choices you make, because it sounds like you're trying to be a little bit of a creeper on us. Like we should be concerned when we take a shower that you may be watching. It took your aunt a while, but she got the hang of it. Your grandmother never really caught on. That's probably why... Why what? Why she didn't last long. But that's something we can talk about later. You felt something today, didn't you? Felt something? Yeah. You felt sick to your stomach, I saw you. I've been feeling sick all day. And where did it start? Now we're going to tell the ghost buddy where we felt weird for the first time. And in case you didn't remember, you can just click on everything until you get the right answer. You mean, the dog run? Yeah, that's where we've got to go. What, right now? Yep, the sooner the better. But it's the middle of the night. So you've just had a nice nap, you should be ready for action. Well, I understand what our ghost buddy's trying to do here. I still kind of think you may be out of touch with the change in times. I'm just saying, a young lady in the middle of the park in the dead of night may not be the smartest place for her to be. I'm not going out to Washington Square Park in the middle of the night. Well, that's where you're wrong. If there's any reason behind this medium business, it's to take care of problems like your dog park. And we have to take care of them soon. So more or less, Joey's introducing us to our new line of work. We've become a problem solver for ghosts now, whether we want to or not. Because if we don't help the ghosts... Let me put it another way. Do you want to end up like your aunt and grandmother? Was that because of you? Did you do that? Not me, kid, not me. I didn't make him that way and I don't know what did. But do you really want to sit around here and find out? Well, hey, maybe the ghost buddy wants us to join him in the afterlife because we go into the damn park in the middle of the night. Fine. Let's go. That's the spirit. After you. Now, what mysterious adventures are going to await us in the dog park in the dead of night? Well, we'll find out next time on part three of the over-analysis of the Blackwell Legacy. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.